I'm thinking. I'd really like to get good at Death Rattle Hunter, but I know Spell Hunter is definitely like the flavor right now, and it's really, really good. It is really, really good. Um, here, I'm going to screen share for you real quick. I pulled up do, 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 four different lists that are all pretty common right now. And so okay. we can look at these real quick and then choose one to kind of use as a baseline. Um, that's probably the easiest way to go, like to start out. So this one is um, the newest Death Rattle Hunter list. It has a lot more late game now. So you run stuff like Swamp King Dread and Undertaker and a one of Savannah so that you can get a really strong um, Undertaker. So your Undertaker will always have either Katharina, High Main, Cube, which is unlucky, but it happens, um, Egg, and then Spider Bomb. So that's pretty strong. I have to ask, with the mechanic of the cube, does it keep the uh, minion inside of it, or is it just a dead death rattle kind of thing for it? Uh, I haven't had it come up, so I'm not positive, but I'm like 99% sure that it just does nothing. Okay. But so I, I genuinely, I didn't know. I like the I like this list. I like how it has Undertaker and Udasa in it. I was trying. I was thinking about whether or not that would work. Because I like Undertaker on this list. I think it's well goes well with the Devil Sore Egg and the uh, the Spider Bombs, and then also Katharina. Yeah, no, I think I haven't tested Undertaker a lot yet, um, but it seems pretty powerful in this kind of shell. Lots of people are trying to decide whether or not Undasta was worth it. I think Undasta is like really, really powerful in Death Row Hunter too. So I like that it has both of them in there. But so this is the list that I've. Um, used the most so far okay and then if we want to look at another death rattle style uh this one is more of like the old style it still runs undasta because it's really good um but you don't have as much late game so you can fit in like some more early game cards so like scarabag to try and help you survive uh against like zoo and stuff you get the tokens out with terror scale that's pretty strong um and then you run a mossy because it'll help your druid match up still and then I was testing out, Urzalei was testing out this Warbear, so it's a pretty okay. decent pull off of Katharina. It can come out of your hand with Indasta, and you know, you get double rush, so. This is more standard of like what we had in Boomsday, but um, I'm not so sure, you know, whether that's better than what we have now or not. I like the other one more, but I so I, I think hello sorry about that yeah uh you cut out a little bit so i wasn't positive what exactly you said <laughs> oh oh i'm sorry um i think the zole list is actually it's probably conservative and better than the other list despite the fact that the other list has all those really big cool cards in it yeah, I think that this is a better, like, I'm not sure how much you've um, played Death Rattle Hunter. I think if you need more of an introduction to it, this is probably better. Um, but having all this late game in this list is really good, because essentially right now there's, like, Zoo, which tries to kill you fast, and then there's a lot of, like, really grindy um, long matches. So having these extra threats with the Dread, the Undertaker, and Noondasta is really powerful. And How then, uh, is does that list do against a uh, spell? Against hunter, every every death Rattle hunter is gonna have a weird matchup versus spell. It kind of depends on how like how much of your early game you draw, because essentially if you can go off with an egg and get like one or two um, devil swords, you're in a good spot. If you get celiacs, you're also in a good spot. But um, if they're able to spell stone you before you have any threats out then you're kind of screwed because hunter doesn't naturally have a way to uh deal with spell stone okay i was just wondering yeah and then if you want to stick with death rattle we can skip over this spell list this is a uh kind of different take on hunter this is one of the most uh common lists right now it's being run a lot because it takes what's good about the Spellhunter list, which is all the secrets and Spellstone with Zul'jin, 
and then it still runs all the good cards from Death Rattle Hunter. So you still have the big bombs with Undasta, Katharina, Witchwood, and um, stuff like that. And so your early game is all traps to buff up the Spellstone. And then you also have Stitch Tracker. So if you Stitch Tracker for an Undasta, then anything you you know have in your hand, you're going to automatically rush out. So that's pretty strong. Um, and it also lets you get extra Witchwoods in matchups where that matters, or extra Shaws if that is what you need. So this is a pretty cool list too. I've played against this list; it was pretty good. Yeah, I think um, I think this this list had like a sixty percent win rate right now, which for how much it's around, like spread around people, um, that's really really good. I did not from Hunter. I expected Hunter to get better, but not like that. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense that Hunter is really powerful in the first couple of days, though, because it was already a strong deck. And um, it only, like, it didn't get anything that was, like, bad. It got Undasta, which automatically, you know, you throw in there. It got Undertaker, which, um, you know, you have to test if it's good or not, but it kind of just slotted right in there pretty well. And um, with Zuljin, everyone's trying Spell Hunter again, so that's why that resurged. Um, especially in the early days, like, considering the, that Death Rattle Hunter was super good in Boomsday, it makes sense that people would gravitate towards a list they already are mostly familiar with um but i think in the like next week or two someone will probably find things that are better it's just it's you know the first couple days of the expansion so everyone's just jumping on every list they can find <laughs> i absolutely agree i kind of did that with baku um mage yeah that's that's another deck that's super common right now um i definitely think hunter's in a much better position than baku mages um going really i I beat a lot of um, Hunter lists with that, and I looked at the list on how it rotates next um, standard rotation set, mm -hmm. and it a lot of its core doesn't get removed. Hmm. I don't know. I It kind of comes down to whether or not you think um, the Zombeasts in the matchup are better than Frost Lashrena, and also it comes down to how many threats they run in the late game. So I think against, against a mage that's running like um, some more of the big spell package. So, like, I'm not sure how many different odd lists there are out there, but um, one of the ones that was really interesting to me is basically like a big spell mage. It ran double blast wave, double dragon's fury, and then double flame strike as the only spells, and then it runs in the late game, um, Jaina, Dragon Caller, Alana, and um, Janali. And so, against that kind of list, you're they're gonna be able to put so much pressure on you in the late game. They probably went out over you. But a lot of the odd mages right now that I've seen don't run that much late game. Especially now that stuff like Baron Gen's being cut, so... Baron's already being cut from it? I'm still running a list with Baron. Yeah, no, I I don't think I actually have seen a list run Baron since the new cards came out. <laughs> okay, okay. My, I, I've been running one collector in there. I know this is off, off topic. Um, the draw one... Uh, whenever you draw one, it gains plus one, plus one. Yeah, that's that kind and of And just like, uh, I've been playing a one of of it, and it actually puts on like a fair amount of pressure. I was pleasantly surprised with that card. Yeah, no, that actually is pretty cool. Oh, and they they run Astromancer typically, or at least some of them do, and so that is also like a really big threat that you can't really answer as Hunter. So that matchup kind of comes down to what list they're running, how much late game, and then um you know, how early and how well-placed their Jaina comes down. Yeah, I agree. I've definitely lost games against Hunter just because Jaina was one of my last cards. Yeah. But yeah, so um, whichever yeah, of these lists seems cool to you, we can just hop in and start with that. Well, let's do the... Mm, one of the Death Rattle Hunters. The okay. Zolay one, probably. The Zolay one? Sounds good. I can copy this over for you. Okay. There you go. You know, this this, uh, this delay list is pretty fun. It plays, like, really, really similarly to the old list. Um, I definitely think, you know, depending on how this list goes, we can try out the more late-game-focused one, because um, I think that this, this deck is probably a little stronger. I think it runs a little bit too much late-game, so there's probably some refinement to do, but um, having all the massive threats is really important, it seems like.
So yeah, just let me know wh when that's set up, and we'll just hop into some games and see how okay. it goes. Oh, and then um, you didn't have an issue last time, but I'll let you know. Uh, I'm doing both streaming and recording, so. Okay. Yeah. If for some reason that becomes an issue, just let me know. Okay, I got it. Oh, I need to show you my screen. Or are, are you doing it spectating? Uh, I'll do it through spectate. Okay. just whenever we get in a game there we go i just got in but yeah no this late list is pretty cool um it only i think it has like four or five different cards from um the boomsday list so it's really really like the standard death Rattle hunter that we've been playing it just takes it gets rid of keliseth puts in scarab eggs and then you run in dasta because in dasta is just really strong yeah I think I'm going to get rid of Krupp. Yep. I like keeping both tracking and scare big. Uh, Shaman, so far, has mostly been um, the doo -doo 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 -doo, like evolve mid rangey Shamans, from what I've seen. But I guess we're going to be going against Even Shaman. So against, even sh against Even Shaman, the scare big will probably be pretty good, because it means we can have tokens to fight his tokens. Yeah. So just tracking. Katharina. Uh, yeah, it's worth considering Mossy because it's a super good tech card versus you know what even Shaman does. Um, but Katharina maybe not Mossy. Plan. So, I think the safer option is Mossy. But if you want, we can still go Katharina. I think you're right. I'm the control in this matchup. Yeah. Okay. So. This is a very good hand for us. Plus, this Mossy is going to trigger both of our eggs if they don't die. Yeah. I don't think the <laughs> Shaman really got that many tools in the new expansion, did it? No, I was looking at it, and it did not. I was kind of disappointed. I ran one list earlier that uh, typically even Shaman doesn't run the t -t -t Grumble, but he tried doing some weird like Battlecry focused and then Grumble even Shaman. That was a really That's interesting. interesting thing to do. It lost horribly, but it seemed kind of cool. Um, Terrahide Stalker? Um, or is Egg okay. better here? Like, this is my issue with this deck. I get a lot of early game options, and sometimes I feel like I choose really poorly. Yeah. Um, I think my gut instinct is just to play Egg. Um just purely because the knife juggler procs could kill our scarabs that we make but also like if his knife juggler procs just hit these tokens that's fine so it might be worth putting on the pressure and getting the one ones to potentially trade considering we have mossy in hand too i think we can afford to just waste the terror scale on this and try to like uh fight for the board because we can pop okay. our egg later on with the mossy anyway dude the art on these scarabs is so cool yeah, I need a golden version of this card. It's great. I'm not super surprised to see that Scarab Egg is good, but uh, I'm happy that people have been testing it because it was one of my like picks for top neutral cards at the set before everything came out. And so it's been running this list. There's a, uh, a zoo deck by, I think, Skywalker that runs double Scarab Egg, double Devil Sword Egg. Did he pop our egg for us? Yeah. Uh, that seems like a mistake. Yeah, it really does. I don't really know what the thought process was there. I guess he gets to kill two of the tokens for free, but... Eh? <laughs> I think I'm okay with that. I'm okay with even him going face here. Like, it really doesn't make a difference. He's playing really 
scared for some reason about these one ones. Yeah. So that that's good for us that he just took a random trade. I feel like we should throw out the egg. Yeah, I'm good with just throwing out the egg because then next turn we set up for either Zilliax or Terror Scale and setting up a Scarab egg. Um, and then yeah, this is the way that I would be trading. I'm gonna get rid of Knife Juggler. Do I get rid of the uh, Mur the Eel? Yeah, so your list is most likely going to have like way more late game than his, uh, purely because you have Death Deathstalker Rexar and Katharina with Crush and Undasta, so you just need to kill all of his threats to make sure he can't come back, because right now I you're know. way in the lead. Yeah, I agree. Alright, so we have a couple different options this turn. Um... We can either just Zilliax and trade the Terror Scale, and then, you know, kill his totem for free because the two damage doesn't matter. We could Terror Scale our Devil Sword Egg and play a Scarab Egg. We could start with tracking and see what we find. What you feeling? I feel like the Zilliax is really, really good. It reduces the board the most. I'm okay with that. We kind of lose out on the Divine Shield, or not the Divine Shield, the Life Steal, which could come in handy later on. Um, hmm. Activating the egg is an interesting thing, too. I could throw out the other egg also. I think I'd be okay with that play. I think, I think that that's the best. Yeah, and then just take Do that free trade and then hold the 1-1s. One yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Because this this develops our board like a lot. Um, I wonder if it might have been better to tracking instead of playing the scare big, but it's they're super similar. Oh, well, Ooh. I guess it would have been better to play tracking, but I didn't expect Skulking yeah. Geist in there. I've played Skulking Geist in my even decks. They're typically pretty good, and in this meta, it seems real good. Dude, this guy really does not like scarabs. He doesn't like the eggs, man. <laughs> All right. So, um, what's the best way to trade into his board? Maybe leaving the skulking is just the best. I'd I'd be okay with that. We just take the free trade and then hit everything face. Um, we could actually we should probably kill his totem just cause with two of our tokens. I'd honestly I'd be okay honestly. with just passing this turn after we do our trades and get our face damage in, though. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I was also thinking about getting rid of the Scarab so he doesn't see Giant. Ooh, that's really smart. I forgot Sea Giant's in that list, most likely. Okay, I like that. I like trading three Scarabs, and then... Um, you could develop either Hound Master Shaw or Zilliax and trade into his Skulking Geist. Um... I feel like Houndmaster is actually really good. At I like that. Houndmaster. We get to fit in a hero power with it, and then we just hit face with everything. Hit face with all all my stuff right now. Yeah, that oh, the spell damage totem shouldn't really matter. I don't imagine that even Shaman runs that many uh, spells because it loses all of its AOE tools because it's um, even. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so it's good that one does draw. Yeah, that's makes him super behind. Ooh, we found a cube, that's pretty cool. Um So what we can do is if we cube the egg, we'll get a five five and our cube, and eventually when our cube dies, uh it'll summon two eggs and we can mossy horror those. So I think that that might just be setting us up for a really strong future if we do that play. I agree. We could also consider just Zilliax and then, you know, 3-3 three, three into 4-3 three, and then Zilliax into 4-2 and then hit face. Um, I think all the time we take this 4-3 trade with our 3-3, three, three. so it comes down to whether we want our um, cube set up or if we want his 4-2 dead. I think setting up our cube's more powerful. I doubt he has a um, silence in hand since he's been playing so scared of all my other stuff anyways. Yep, I agree. We're we're ahead, so we may as well push the advantage instead of um, 
going for a more board control. Oh, play. yep, he just conceded. Nice. But yeah, that's the thing with Death Row Hunter is a lot of the time, because you're not really an aggro deck, and you're not really a control deck. You have a lot of different plays each turn to kind of decide which way you want to go. Because a lot of... Um, a lot of different lines either lead to being like super tempo or like super controlly, and both styles can probably win you games. So it's sometimes it's hard to, you know, figure out exactly what the best line is each time. Absolutely. Like this is definitely a uh, a deck that's prone to trump trading. I'm not sure if you've uh, if you're familiar with that term, but um, back in like classic and even still now and stuff. Uh, the streamer and YouTuber Trump, whenever he's in like a commanding position, will just trade over and over again and like never push face damage and then lose a shit ton of games that he shouldn't lose. I've done that before. Or I, I that's definitely like a common mistake I'll make. Yeah, that's something that I have a that is like one of the biggest problems for me too. Um Deathstalker and Playdead. I'd be okay with throwing out Playdead too. Um, I'm not sure what the win rate percentage is of keeping Playdead without a combo piece. Um, for sure, we get rid of the middle two, and then Playdead I think is it's probably good to keep. I'm just not positive on the you know actual stats for that, so I, I'm okay with keeping it. I'll try. Nice. This is pretty good. We found a tracking. Mossy's probably not going to do too much in the matchup, but yeah. I might be able to put some extra pressure on later. We basically just have to worry about uh, Psychic Scream. Depending on what Priest he is, there's, you know, I'm not even sure what people are playing in Priest right now for the most part. Yeah. Ooh. I feel like Scarab Egg's pretty good. Hmm. It's a good turn, too. Flanking Strike's not bad either if he has, like, the Cleric or something. I think I like Flanking Strike more. Just because we have nothing in our hand that answers um, like his plays. We just have stuff that develops our own board, but it's kind of slow. We also need a second turn four. Yeah, I'm pretty... I like the this choice. It gives us something to do in case he plays a minion. Um, priest lists right now are either... Like the classic Shadow Reaper Anduin, Alex Raza, and then Mind Blast burst you. Um, there's some Princess Talanji list going around that runs like Stonehill and Seance and um, stuff like that to get a big swing. And then there's the Surrender to Madness Priest, which we're probably not against. And what was. There's one more archetype that I wanted to bring up. Oh, the Miracle Priest. Have you seen that yet? Which one? It runs, like, Double Radiant, um, Lyra, a bunch of cheap spells, and, like, Cleric and stuff to draw. It tries to get zero mana Grave Horrors, and then Seance the Grave Horrors, and just make a giant push um, with Divine Spirit Inner Fire. Huh. Okay, so I'm just gonna Hero Power here. Yeah. But, so, that's most likely what we're against. Um, that deck today, like, I think it... I think the first list was made yesterday, and now today it seems to be all over. I played against some priests today, and it's all they always run Psychic Scream and stuff like that. So, I did play against a Dragon Priest today, which was interesting. Oh yeah, there's also Dragon Priest lists going around. Um, I was playing Kibblers, which is a Dragon Shell that also runs Elise and... Um, Bone Drakes, and then Princess Talanji, so your random dragons from Bone Drakes will come on the board, and then anything you get from your release pack will come on the board. There's also wow. um, a ton of different quest variants going around that run the... Oh god, what's it called? The, the like, really meme legendary that puts the bloods into your deck. The, like, 10 mana 9-6 or whatever, Hakar. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, those lists are popping up. Um, I didn't unbox Hakar, so I'm not sure how good or bad it is. It looks like we're just against Cloning Gallery Priest, though. Yeah, which is all about pushing damage as fast as I can. So I think I should play um, Egg and playing, or play Dead. Uh, I'd be okay with that, yeah. 
Another line of play is saving coin to get Deathstalker Rexar out a turn earlier so we can keep making zombies earlier, but um, this pushes for more immediate tempo, so. Cloning Priest should be a fairly difficult matchup for us, um, but we'll see how it goes. I feel like it was actually one of the easier matchups when I was playing Death. Um, Rattle, Hunter, last patch, or yeah, last patch. I mean, it was... If our if he's not able to answer our early board, then we get to push a lot of damage. It's just if it gets to late game, any turn after like turn eight, they can threaten lethal. So, so. yeah. I don't think it's the worst matchup though. It's definitely it gives us enough time to work with. He's definitely taking his time. Yep. I don't know. That that list, uh, I don't have a ton of experience with. It seems fairly difficult, though, so... Yeah, I, I was know. definitely messing around with it myself, and it... Undertaker's hard to play right. Wait, there's an Undertaker in that list? Oh, which one? Oh, I meant the list he's playing. <laughs> oh, this one? Oh, I... This, this list is definitely hard to play. I've played it before. Yeah, I think you left though. Uh, it kind of looks like it, yeah. Um, I would just be playing Houndmaster, hit and face, probably. Especially since he seems to be AFK, that puts the most stats on the board. Yeah. But I think even, you know, if the board was somehow basically this way on it, it with him playing cards, it's still right to Houndmaster. I really like setting up Houndmaster when we have Flanking Shrike in hand. Because it means if he develops two threats, you can flanking one and then have your rush kill something else. Yeah, I feel like I carnivorous is the thing. Yeah, that's the egg is fine to me, and then just push face damage. This is a very insightful match that we have here. Yeah, we're learning a lot. <laughs> that's all right. Sometimes you gotta take the free ones. I feel that. Yeah. Cool. We made it. Pro plays. I wasn't sure we were going to get there, but we got there. I, I think he just... Either. Just quit when I threw out that egg because he just didn't have an answer to it. Yeah, I guess. I don't know though. That that deck has a lot of answers. It runs double shadow visions. You can get uh, psychic streams. He already had a coin, so like he he definitely wasn't in a bad position on turn three. Yeah, he wasn't in a bad position. But if you don't have any of your shadow visions and a lot of your hand is your minions, you're fucking screwed. That's true. Yeah. Oh, not the same guy. It isn't. Do I keep the Shaw? Um, I typically do, just because um, it can be a pretty good swinging. Like, you know, if it survives turn 4 and you play anything turn 5, it can be really good for you. And typically, like... It's a little bit better now that we run Scarab Eggs, but back when you only ran Keliseth, like, your early game was kind of lacking, so at least it was a body. Um, I'm definitely good with keeping it, though, and just tossing back Mossy and Zilliax. Yeah, I feel the same way. That deck is actually Ooh, this is a good hand. hand. That's what I would have thought, so... Ooh, this is really good. I wonder how the Undertaker would be if you cut um, Kelizeth and put the Scarab Eggs in that. That'd be interesting, yeah. I'm not positive. It seems like it wouldn't be like that bad, though. Alright, so he has a Cleric. So this turn we do nothing because we have nothing to do. And depending on how much he um, you know, either buffs its health or plays other minions... Oh, he's playing Dragon Priest, okay. Interesting. I wonder if this is the uh, Princess Talani Kibler list, because that list we're probably like really favored against. 
Yeah. So I feel like good, probably like you can either coin egg instead of for terror scale, or you can just pass. Because I don't want to play the scare bag because he can just get a free heal off of it, and then our one one tokens don't do a lot. But what about um, is setting up the devil sore egg better? Because if he doesn't trade into that egg with his three stats and doesn't heal it, he gets no cards and like there's a five five on the board then. Yeah, so I think coining egg is the best play because if he decides to like attack in heal and draw a card, that's fine because next turn we get to set up a three mana eight eight. And if he decides to full trade, then uh, we end up with a five five, and both of those lines are good for us. I agree. Unless he has Shadow or Death, then it's a little Which, bit unlucky. Okay. Yep. Oh, that, that sucks. I mean, it's kind of a whiff of a turn, but I'm, I think I'm okay um, just playing Terror Scale here to try and contest his 1-3, because we don't want that getting too big. Um, and especially, like, our hand doesn't have any super good Death Rattles in it. Like, Magnet Bomb is going to come down too late, because um, he'll just be able to develop more and more. And then Scarebag, we don't really want to use while the North Shire is on board. I agree. Oh. Oh, that's bad. That was really strong. Hmm. I feel like sh I want to Shaw, but at the same time, Shaw doesn't do enough on board. I'd be okay with Shawing, because um, it currently doesn't die on board. And that buff only came from his uh, Fire Tree Doctor, so his deck probably doesn't run that much that actually kills, like, deals the extra one damage. Okay. And if this lives, it sets up for, like, a really good Spider Bomb, because um, we can trade in something, direct the bomb the way that we want it. Absolutely. And if he takes a free card off us, that's fine. For the amount of turns he's had this North Shire on board, he hasn't really gained any card advantage over us, so... Nice. That's really good for us. Double Spider Bomb! So, I'm definitely looking at probably tracking and then Spider Bombing this turn. Yeah. Catherine is real good. Catherine is real good. I don't. I don't think we can afford to get rid of Katharina. Yeah, I feel like this is a matchup that I really need her. Yeah, I like Katharina. And then Spider Bomb, and then I think the best way to trade this in is to go uh, both of them. So Houndmaster first, and then kill off the North Shire with Magnet Bomb, so that we can make sure North Shire dies, and then hopefully we high roll the four five. Okay, that's fair. Unlucky. Sucks to suck. <laughs> that's good. That's not bad, though. We got rid of his buffed up uh, North Shire, so he's not going to be able to get that much card advantage off us. And we were able to use a tracking before the Geist came down. Um... Which one, Grizzly, isn't too bad? I was going to say, our only real play is to Grizzly, and then... Um... I would equip Candle Shot and hit the 4 2, because that way, if he heals it, it's still a 3 and it'll die to the Witch with Grizzly. Yeah. It, it's interesting to see that lists are starting to tech in uh, Geist to beat all the Hunters now. I've been teching in Geist for a long time now. I felt like Hunter was even dominant last. Last meta, it was really strong too, yeah. Or, yeah, last expansion. Or, mm. Okay. Mm. This is a difficult one. I was say, this hand ain't super good for us. Um, my instinct is just to go scare big and then eat the scare big. I don't really see what he can play against us that's like good versus that, and it sets up for Katharina, so he might waste an AoE or something. Okay, um, yeah. It's a little bit wasteful because our cube doesn't get that much value, but we don't really have a plan.
play aside from that. Some value is better than no value. Yeah. And if this eats like a any form of AoE for some reason, then that's really good for us. Absolutely. Dude, I'm really glad you want to do a session to, a session tonight. I've been trying to get more people to start doing them, especially with all the new cards. Like, right now is the time to do it, I think. I definitely do struggle the most at the beginning of expansions. That's what I think, too. I was We had, like, three or four new people join, and just no one even messaged me today. I was like, why'd you join if you're not going to, like, hit me up? Yeah, what's the point? All right, so this sets up for an easy Katharina turn. Um, and then we can just do some trades, depending on what comes out of our Katharina. Nice. So, so I uh, kill the, the dragon and I take the I could take the skulking guy geist off. That sounds good to me. It does let the ooze kill this, but at the same time, I'm not sure how attached I am. Yeah, that's not. It doesn't end up being that big of a deal. I really like the war bear in this list. Um, I was trying it in taunt druid, but it turns out that that's a beast, and so it messes with your witching hour. <laughs> Um, I've been seeing a lot of Taunt Druids just running the Undertaker and Astral Spirit Tigers. Oh, that's really and... interesting. That could be super cool. I didn't even think of that. Ooh, okay, this is good. So we can just go Candle Shot 1-1 one, one into the 3-2. Oh, or we can I, was... I feel like he probably has... I feel like... Flinking probably isn't as good. He could have Psychic Scream still. Yeah, I think we're so like we're getting to the bottom of our deck. We're looking for that Rexar. We don't want him shuffling things into our deck. Yeah. Especially a shitty one-one token. So I just take that trade and then hit face with everything else. And he should have issues with these two creatures. Yeah, these should be fairly difficult for him to deal with, and then. Once that cube pops, it only brings out Scarabakes, which isn't a big deal, but, uh... Oh, we could just be dead to Double Mind Blast, by the way. Oh, oh, totally. But we couldn't play around that. There's nothing we could have done. <laughs> Did he find it? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, there it is. Um, but yeah, like, earlier we were talking about how Death Rattle Hunter seem... Or not just Death Rattle Hunter, but Hunter in general seems really powerful right now. I think that, uh... If that keeps pace, we're going to be seeing a lot of Dragon Priest, because it has one of the best answers to uh, Spellstone, and then also Hunter has like no healing until they get to the really late game with Zombeasts, and so you can just burst them out like we just got bursted out. Yeah. But it's still very strong. How are you feeling about the Scarabags so far? We've only had two matches, but... I really like them. I feel like they're a lot more consistent than Kelseth. I like being able to play something out of my hand on turn two, actually. Yeah, I like it too. I do want to see if maybe we can fit um, maybe like one more big beast into our deck just to make our Katharina and our Undasta better. This list is really... like We run Undasta, but we don't run that many beasts. So it's not always super powerful. Like, it was stranded in our hand last game because we didn't have a beast to pull with it. Yeah. Um, what... Mm. So we're against Paladin. I, I Paladin feel... has a ton of different archetypes right now. Um, but I don't think that Spider Bomb is good versus any of them. So I think we probably just keep Terror Scale and throw everything else away. Okay. I really struggle with mulliganing this deck. Like, that was definitely one of my hardest times last nice. we found expansion. Right yeah, this one, like I said, this deck can sometimes be like the super control, or sometimes you have to go like super tempo we and try to race with face damage, and so it's mulligan and it's like early game plan changes pretty much every match. Yeah. So it can be a difficult one to start to learn. Uh, I guess we're just hero power. This is looking like a really strong hand, though. We go th turn three egg, turn four play uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then it looks like I it's going to be Exodia Paladin. Yeah, and I have a lot of pressure. Now, I'm not positive, but from what I've seen, Exodia Paladin's um, 
are either the Holy Wrath version, or they run both Holy Wrath with Shrivala and also uh, the Uther Death Knight, and try to go for both. So essentially, we have to worry about taking 25, uh, or taking 50 in one turn. Yeah, I've seen that. And we also have to be worried about taking 25 in one turn, because, again, we don't have a lot of healing in Hunter, so if we ever get low, then just one uh, Holy Wrath on Shrivalo gets us. But I think we just go yeah. 3-1 and push the board. That's a big turn four. He almost yeah. ha he has to do something about it, and I still wind up with a five five. No, I won't. I if he has, um, the thing is, there's not that much he can do. He can set up for like an equality coin consecrate next turn. He, he has. Like, he might have pyro. Oh, he might have pyro equality. That's true. Just equality. Uh, oh, and the coin. Oh. Okay. Dang. That's okay. It feels bad because we put a lot into that, but um, that was really only two cards. <laughs> and he used a lot of resources to get rid of it. Yeah, getting rid of an equality pyro clear is really big for us because it means because he's most likely a late game paladin because he was running the novice engineer. And so now he doesn't have that later for when we have zombies. Um, I feel like Candle Shot might be good. I was leaning more towards Spider Bomb, because we're getting into the mid game where we can go Spider Bomb Terror Scale. Yeah, we that's our turn six. Yeah, and this turn we can just like flanking strike that guy down. Flanking strike's such an insane card. I feel like getting value out of Death Stalker is probably really important here. Uh, yeah. I just like playing Rexar down. Hello. I love, dude. That's my favorite hero. I own him, and I find him annoying, actually. Oh, dude, I think he. I I go to say like threaten or like oops, and it's always just different hellos. And I'm like, oh shit, I can't actually like emote to my my person. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is a fairly weak board from him. Um. I like saving the terror scale to use with either magnet bomb or Katharina, depending on how the game goes. So I just like starting with a zombies. Because we could have gone Egg Terror Scale this turn, but I'm not sure how powerful that is. We could try to go Night Prowler. Um, See if I mean, we he, don't get a 1. He's going to have three different 1-1s one on board, so I don't think we're ever going to get value out of its battle cry. I like just going with Elec, so that we can try and make one that's cheaper. There you go. Like I'm, I'd be okay with just Elec Stone Tusk, and then playing it this turn. Getting rid of Blood Mage. Yeah, it's not super impactful, but it'll get rid of his true silver charge most likely, and that's, you know, good enough for this random zombie. Yeah. Beast. So, I'm looking at potentially wanting to terror scale this, or magnet bomb it down. Um, I could be convinced otherwise. Catherine is a real strong um, tempo play. I understand why you want to do that, because we can also zombies then, and if we get the Anixia or whatever, um, we can overkill with it and get a beast out of our hand. I'm, I guess I'm okay with just Catherine, actually. Okay. Catherine should be pretty big. And then hopefully we draw, we pull like a Witchwood Grizzly or essentially just not Crush. Because we wanted to save Crush for damage later. And Dusta. 
Well, we don't have a beast in our hand anyway. I say we may as well take out this divine shield, um, in case he has another buff. He might not be able to kill it. I was gonna say, if it somehow lives, we can make just a really expensive zombie beast and then pop it in. Because we also have the hunter's mark. If we, because right now we don't overkill, so we might have to waste the hunter's mark to overkill if it survives. But if we get a really yeah. big zombie out of it, then it's definitely worth it. Okay, so that's fairly weak. Um, that's real weak. Yeah, that's not super impactful. That's uh, one Equality, one Consecrate, and one Wild Pyro down. So he only has one Equality, one Consecrate left for clears. Burning Christology. I wonder if he's actually just um, Immortal Prelate Paladin and not um, one of the combo ones. But it doesn't make sense that he's running Novice if he's doing that. I kind of like spider bombing this turn with tear hide and still crafting of the. Yeah, I'm good with that because we get to clear the three seven and the two seven with Katharina. That seems pretty good. Yeah. Silence oh, is pretty good mind. too. I like silence. I like just going silence and then like either poison or wind fury. I could be convinced either way. Both are pretty strong. Yeah, I like this. So we silence it, and then we, like, play an egg. I think we kill it anyways, just in case. I'm okay with killing it, yeah, because he might have another spike ridge, and also uh, he only has one Consecrate left, so I kind of like the idea that this zombie might live with the Wind Fury. And also, if he tries to board clear, we still have stuff left over. Yep. Dude, Owl is so good. Remember when Owl was two mana? I know. It's insane. I wonder if that Shield Breaker card is going to become any good in like a super aggro deck. The one that silences just a taunt minion. I was thinking about putting that into the even Shaman list, actually. That could be kind of interesting. Dude, I don't know why, but, like, I think five of my, like, ten total videos on the YouTube are all about Shaman. <laughs> I literally, I spent, like, four hours yesterday play, testing different Shaman lists. Shaman's a hard class to play. I didn't realize that. Shaman has a lot of different stuff going on, too. Like, you, there's so many different directions you can go that it's kind of hard to just pinpoint what's best. Absolutely. Alright, so I like just starting with zombies because our hand is kind of crappy. Ooh. You could definitely convince me of another owl, just in case. Yeah. I like owl, stranglethorn, and just playing that this turn, maybe. It's not super big, but it's scary. And then, if we want, we can silence our Katharina. We don't get the pull out of it, um, but it'd be a 6-6. Six -six. I might want the pull, actually. What I was thinking was... Um, hmm. Do we know... We have Crush and one Witch Woody Grizzly left, right? Yeah. I'd be okay with just trading Katharina then, and seeing what we pull first before we decide anything. Okay, so that goes face. Um, Wind Fury Boy, I think we trade in now. Yep. And then... Um, we can just silence crush, or we can save silence, it's whichever you want to do. But I like putting this out, this requires that he has his, um, equality and consecrate, or like, a second shrink ray or something, because we threaten lethal. Yeah, he's used a lot of control so far, clearing our board on, like, really bad things. I think that this is the Tice OTK list, it runs one shrink ray, double equality, double pyro, double consecrate. Um... 
from what I remember seeing, though, Tice was the only one running Novice Engineer. And so he's basically out of AoE unless he has Equality Concentrate or Equality Pyro, which is a one of in his list now. Yeah. This is going to get interesting. Wow, that's really strong. I never that is real good. I was playing Heal Paladin, and I didn't even notice that uh, Kangor was a card. <laughs> Two mana restore eight is crazy. And he draws a card. I kind of want to make a beast again. Yep. Essentially, in the late game, you just always make a beast because they're super strong. Um, I kind of like nesting rock, but I can also go for chicken just to get something smaller. Yeah, I kind of want chicken. Okay, let's go with chicken. Chicken stranglethorn. Chicken chicken, chicken scale hide. Chicken scale hide's pretty good. And then we can trade like. How do we want to kill this Kangor? Because this Kangor has to die. We can go Chicken Scale Hide and Flanking Strike this turn and kill off Kangor and then push a ton of face damage. Yeah, we need to kill Kangor. Yeah, it's a little bit too scary. So I'm not going to get the overkill off of that no matter what. Nah. What's it called, dude? Maybe he'll make a 1-1 one, one token, and we can make a 7-2 a Gurubashi chicken. He might have his second, um, his last board clear. Yeah, he might. But we didn't, we didn't develop that much into it. Um, we essentially put in the Zombeast, because the Flanking Strike already got value out of killing the minion. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like his second clear is going to be coming out. Ooh, he and he messes though. it up, yeah, too. He didn't, he didn't clear the egg. Yeah. Um, and, oh, wow. Yeah, he didn't do this correctly at all. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, so I like yeah. this beast, and then probably Mossy Horroring. Yeah, me too. I like the Vicious for. Uh, I kind of like I could get a zero cost off of crackling. Yeah, I kind of like crackling. Um, scale hide. It's yeah, the like cheapest. Scale hide too. And then I would drop that scare rig just because, in case he yeah. plays, in case for some reason his play involves his second consecrate. The scarabs are beast, right? Yeah. Ooh, Lanessa. Well, we have Spider Bomb and Terror Scale for that. Fortunately, yeah. We still are oh, gonna have to fight through that other thing too. Oh, he timed out instead of one wanting two. That's really good for us because that means we get to actually just kill the uh, Lanessa instead of having it be a fifty-fifty with a one-one. Yeah. So yeah, I like going. I like doing that, I think. Killing it? Yeah, because that's going to be the biggest threat left in his deck, because he's just going to try and OTK us with Shrivala now. And then we can um, Candle Shot to trade 5 and 1, I guess? Or we could Hound Master, and that'll give our Spider Bomb rush. We can just trade the Spider Bomb in. And then keep the rest of our board. I like trying to make another um, another beast. Thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm good with that. Ooh, charge. I don't know what we chose in the first one, but charge is the right answer. Bear shark. Yep, that's what I would have chosen too. Cool. Bear shark's so good. So, essentially, the only thing we have to worry about is uh, 
the second time out. But it looks like he's going to be one turn too slow, because if he times out now, he still has to have a turn to set up his combo before he can Holy Wrath us. Yeah. I'm really surprised at how consistent the Holy Wrath Paladin has been. I think, um, I don't remember who it was, I think it was like Tice or somebody who went like 10 and 2 with it in Legend though. What? That's insane. It's I timeout. It. I haven't tried it yet, but it seems really good. Timeout is what enables that. I really dislike spells like that too. I feel like it making yourself uninteractable for a turn is like a dangerous tool to be introducing to the game, I think. Yeah, it's really dangerous, but I think it's much safer in something like Paladin than it is in something like Mage with Ice Block. Simply because the uh, Paladin combos take so much longer to set up. So like, even if you're going for the Exodia with uh, like bouncing all the 2-2s two -twos into your hand, that takes forever to do. So yeah, there's the second timeout. So now, his play most likely next turn is trying to um, double Holy Wrath us. So, let's see, what can we do here? We don't have a Beast, so our Adapt doesn't do anything, but it does have Rush, if that comes in handy. We also have a Charge Minion. So, I think the way that we do it is... Um, we start with making a zombies, and we're going to play both of our four mana zombies this turn. Yeah. So we just want the biggest thing we can get. Um, what did we choose in the first one? Okay, that's fine. Loose specimen. Okay. So now we go, yeah, that one with charge, because then we get to adapt it to. And hopefully we get something like Divine Shield. Ooh, uh... oh, Wind Fury's okay. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna like just take it, it. So we go four. Yep, and then rush guy into the three four. No, 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 don't. Yeah, rush guy, and then spider bomb into that so that he doesn't heal for seven more. Yeah. And now, depending on what he draws, his double holy wrath is not um, confirmed to kill us. And we have a lot on board. Oh, actually, if he has double Holy Wrath in hand, we lose because he has the True Silver Champion equipped too. We weren't able to find it to yeah. Maybe going with Nesting Rock instead of the Loose Specimen and playing the Taunt this turn would have been better. Maybe. I didn't consider that um, with the True Silver, that's 29, so his second Holy Wrath would only have to deal one damage. Because that looks like what's happening to us. Yeah, it looks like we're, uh... Yeah. We hit the 25, too. Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, well, we couldn't have done anything. We got double 25 So, I guess, somewhere along the line, we just had to be more aggressive. We gave him too much time. Yeah. Do we want to mess with this deck a little? Uh, sure. Let's go into the collection. I'll pull up the list. And we can see what we can change around. Um, is there anything in it that hasn't felt super good? I felt like the Armani War Bear was actually pretty bad. Yeah, it didn't it didn't uh, inspire me that much. Let's see what other big beasts we can put in in its place first. Let's type in beast and look at some big dudes. Um. We could consider like a Swamp King Dread. That would be pretty cool. Um, we could consider a Charged Devil Sword just to push more face damage. I think if we're changing our beast around, the best one is probably just going to be uh, Swamp King Dread. Yeah. Do you, if you happen to have Swamp King Dread, he's kind of out of oh. that. I, I do, him. actually. <laughs> Alright, so let's put him in. Um, is there a way... We're already running Scarabig. Is there a way to take advantage of our tokens more? Because we can't run Crackling Razor Maw because it messes with our recruits, but... Is there a way to maybe make our deck like have a better tempo like chance? Um, what if we put in 
Oh god, Defender of Argus. I could see a one of Defender of Argus being alright. I think we'd cut like Zilliax for that though. Mm, if we're gonna make a cut, I think one of the best things we could cut is maybe like a single candle shot. Because it's only useful in certain matchups. Yeah. Because Zilliax is really, really good. Zilliax is insanely good. What were we putting in again? Uh, Defender of Argus. Right, yeah, let's try that. I like Defender. It's let's really underplayed. Game. Maybe I could have put the 5 drop one in. The uh, Mushroom Power Fungal. Eh. Fungal, I think, is a little bit too pipe dream. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. Okay, I said we jam a couple games with just this slightly modified list, and then um, depending on how it goes, we can try out the other death rattle list, or we can try like the the recruit list that we have too. I kind of want to try out the other death rattle list. You want to do that? That sounds good to me. Let's pull up that. I'll copy paste it over to you. There you go. Cool, thank I, you. I think that this will be really interesting to try because we get to test out the the Undertaker and see how he feels. I was playing in a deck earlier. Um, so like moles like this, I'm never sure what to keep. I feel like Death Rattle or Death Stalker is real good because it's value against this. Um, I'm hopping into Spectate still. So what do you what do you have? I have a Terror Sky uh, or a Terror Scale Stalker, a Play Dead, and Death Stalker. Okay, I'd probably get rid of a Play Dead, keep the Terror Scale, and then keep the Death Stalker. Okay, that's what I thought too. Play Dead can combo late game with uh, cubes, so it's better to keep Terror Scale in the early game rather than Play Dead typically. Okay. Wow, this hand is not looking super hot though. Yeah, it's kind of clunky. We might be able to get there though. Maybe. We do have Rexar on 6, so that's pretty good. Rexar is good on 6, too. Hey, we found an egg. That makes our hand so much better, because we can go egg on yeah. scale. How revealing. Ooh. Maybe we don't want to tear scale in case that's, like, explosive. But even then, it might just be worth it. And then, uh... We can tracking next turn. Yeah, I'm okay with just developing the terror scale. And then when we test for secrets, we'll hit with the terror scale first in case it's uh, wandering or freezing. Yeah. Ooh, never mind, we won't. I suppose we're testing with a scarab. Yeah, I'm okay with just uh, trading these two. Because the scarabs don't really mean a lot to us. Yeah. What's tracking first, though? Sounds good. Katharina? Katharina, for sure, yeah. Then Do I want to Hunter's Mark that at all? I feel like that's a bad play. Yeah, I feel like that's a little too aggro. Let's just see if we proc a Freezing or like a Venom Strike. Okay. So it's most likely Wandering or Explosive. Because it has to be procced off of um, attack. Hitting space. phase. Yeah. I've always liked Swamp King Dread. I thought his design was super cool. Yeah, I've always liked him too. I was sad that he never really got a lot of play. I feel um, like we should Carnivorous Cube that. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with doing that. Uh, it gives us 1 1s to test with explosive or for other traps. It's like our really only play that turn because we had nothing else. Ooh, baited arrow. Okay, so I like uh, throwing a 1-1 one, one into the 5-5 five, five, and then throwing the cube into the 5-5 five, five, and then testing the seeker with the other 1-1. One, one. I really like Death Stalker. Yeah, I think yeah. Death Stalker is still our play, but I like testing for secret first because the two damage... Um, yeah. It's better to... Uh, is it? I think it's better to um, test secret first, 
um, and then Deathstalker. Yeah, because then we might be able to, if it's wandering, uh, hit the two damage on the minion. Nice. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. All right. That worked out pretty well for us. Yeah. So seven, we probably go Swamp King. Eight, we go Katharina. Turn nine, we can tear scale Katharina. Absolutely. And if we get a chance, you know, we always can build a beast. But our turns look pretty strong. <laughs> That's absolutely a thing. Go ahead, dude. Faded Arrow is really good. I I didn't think it was going to be that strong. I thought it was going to be such trash. I'm not going to lie. All right. So, yeah, I'm good with just dropping the Dread. Seeing where this goes. I should have put that in the middle. He could have Crushing Wall. That would be a punish. Has he played any minions? Yeah. No, he hasn't um, played any minions. He's only played the two uh, baited arrows. Yikes. So one of those is almost guaranteed freezing. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. So we're going to start with Katharina. We're going to hope to pull Undasta. Then we're going to trigger the freezing and re pull out Swamp King Dread. Okay, okay. Undasta? Nice. Oh my god, we got it. Alright, so we hit face. And we most likely get freezinged. Yes. And then we'll see what the other one was. Wandering cool. Did he? I feel like I killed. Like, that's funny. Yeah, we killed a five-five. Both his wanderings gave him uh, <laughs> augmented elk. Though that's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty funny. Nice. My that next was, turn's was... real good. Okay, so he has spell hunter. And now he's trying to go super aggro because he thinks he's going to die. die. So and he probably... Like... I think we start with zombies to try and get lifesteal. Okay, we'll see. Ooh, Cave Hider's pretty good too. Cave Hydra cave Poison is. Okay, I feel like Cave Hydra poison, poison is in case he has Spellstone. Okay. And then... I think this turn, it might be better just to go like Terror Scale, Play Dead, and fill our board with giant, uh, hopefully Witchwood Grizzlies. Hey. Oh my god. How much damage is that? A lot. Not quite lethal. Um, so I think with our Katharina, we want to kill the Leoc in case of Unleash the Hounds. I agree. And then I'd be okay with trading into this with your 8-8, but I also am I'm good if you hit phase 2. It's safer to trade, because we have so much damage anyway. I think it's safer to trade too, and he could just blow me up because he's Spell Hunter. <laughs> nice deadly shot. It says right between the eyes, I didn't realize. Nice. That was a good game, okay. Hey, level 40 Hunter, let's go. Yeah, I do not play Hunter that much. I think my last class to hit 60 was Priest, because Priest was, like, awful for so long. Yeah, the only reason I got Gold Priest is because of Rasekit. Yeah. Dude, I remember back when Lyra came out in Ungoro, and literally, like, Priest decks had no threats. It was just, like, you won off of Lyra somehow. That was a fun deck. Oh, uh, was it the uh, Savage deck? Yeah. I never got into that. I, I have that weapon, too, and I just think it's so terrible. Oh, yeah, it's awful, but that that's how I got my Golden Priest. <laughs> I do miss Razaka's Priest, though, like the Shadowy Branduin combo deck. I think they should buff Raza now that he's in um, wild again. Alright, let's see. Do I keep Katharina? Like, is that worthwhile? So, last meta I would have said no because of Odd Paladin, but Odd Paladin isn't super common right now, so it's most likely one of the OTK versions, and so I'm okay with keeping it because it's super powerful. So I keep Howlmaster, do I keep Spider Bomb? 
don't think so. I think we can drop double spider bomb. I feel like how master is an important key. Uh, that was a bit of a trump trade, yeah, but we had so much damage that it didn't matter. The only thing that could have potentially mattered was if uh, we left that Huffer alive and he had like kill commands. Um, that activates the extra damage from him. That was the only reason. I don't hit face with this. Nah. I think this is OTK. Uh, it could also be Prelate Paladin. Prelate Paladin runs Christology, um, so that it gets its stone hills and its prelates out early. Ooh, what the hell? This is gonna be interesting. I was say, this is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm okay with coining Houndmaster to set up for a flanking strike with Rush. Yeah. I'm gonna hit into this, that way if he buffs it, um, it dies. Okay. <laughs> this is, uh, I'm interested to see what he's doing though with this banana guy. Okay, so it's Prelip Paladin and he just happens to like bananas. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, I haven't, that's actually probably pretty good. Because one of the problems you have with Prelate Paladin is that early game, uh, your buffs kind of suck. And so having these early buffs with the bananas might be really good. So, I'm good with just flanking strike trading it. It goes one for one, and then he has to find a way to get his Prelate back. Uh, do I hit with Houndmaster? No. No, because you're 3 Yeah, I want to do 3. Dude, this is a really strong hand. We have Katharina play dead, we have Undasa to play a Witchwood Grizzly if we need it, and we have Keliseth. Yeah. What? Okay. Lens. This should be pretty interesting. Oh, right. This is an interesting build of this. I haven't seen Lens yet. I like going 2 3. Yeah, same here. The Lens. Oh, God, dude. I don't even know what spells he could be running. I guess he could be playing, like, Secrets. Oh, it might be like a dino size to get like a Ooh. really low cost dino size. Oh my god, glow size. Oh no, this is bad. <laughs> um. Hmm. So. Yikes. This turn really sucks. Um. I feel like just throwing out the Witchwood gri Grizzly and sending the rest face might just be best. I guess I'm okay with that. It's weak, but we don't really have much to do. Yeah. And I don't think I'll hit the guy once. That, much. So that yeah, way it dies win. in when he goes into Grizzly. Yeah. Oh, it has Rush. We can kill that guy off. Oh, that's good. I didn't even consider that. That's worked out pretty well, though. I totally forgot about that, too. I kind of want to play Spider Bomb for whatever big thing oh, comes down. No. Oh, no, this is wanna, bad. We'll save Spider Bomb because uh, we have Death Rattle triggers for it. So next turn he'll probably play like a big ass buffed taunt dude, and we can try to kill it with Spider Bomb. Yeah. I think this turn we just hit all face and don't really worry. Um, we could tear the so, egg too. if you want, but I think that that overextends a little bit. I think it overextends also. I think I'm just going to hit face because he has to still go through this. Yeah, I like that. Also, our hero power is just good. Yeah, it turns out. Dealing two. This is a really cool list. I don't really know what he's doing, but... Yeah, like I appreciate it. Alright, cool. So we get to go Spider Bomb... Terror scale, play dead, and then I think we have yeah. three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, we win. Wow. That's really interesting. I like the idea of the banana guy. I'm not so sure how sold I am on the glowstone tech, but. Nice. You can definitely sell me that. Um... Oh, we're one man uh, off. What? <laughs> That's okay, I would just, yeah, 4-4 four, four into there. Oh, 
I, I could sell you on what? Oh, you could definitely sell me on the banana buffoon guy being good in this in this deck. Oh yeah, totally. I didn't even think about that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I think we, we still win. This. Yeah. I, I think we have to do the cool Katharina play. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that only wins us the game if it pulls out Crush, and we have Dread still. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so I'll yeah, just we'll... take the free wins. That was a really interesting deck, though. That was really cool. Yeah. I think Udasta has really good card art. I think Udasta is one of the like coolest neutral cards of the set. Same here. I think the one that sets your both players' mana to five is really interesting, too. Yeah, I think that that's really strong. Um, it hasn't really seen a lot of play yet, but that's going to be in, like, I don't know, three weeks. It's going to be in, like, I think the top three aggro decks will all run it. Same here. I think it's going to be, like, the best tech card for aggro decks. Yep. It's like a kind of a new Loatheb. I think I mull away the Carnivorous Cube and that's it. Yep. I like this hand a lot. This hand's pretty good. Hey, Swedron was not bad. Ooh, we're against an Odd Paladin. Interesting. Okay. Okay, I can deal with this. I don't remember why, so this idea that I'm about to tell you is going to be, like, not very good. But I had an idea with some of the new cards in the set. For some reason, it stood out to me that a kind of controlly odd paladin might be a thing, because you can just get through the early game with your infinite tokens. And then there was some card that made me think, dude, this could be a really good control tool. You know what I thought of? Or I built a uh, thirty-six damage um, mage ping. <laughs> that sounds really fun. How do you? Do it's that? so. So you have um, you have galvanizers, the one that um, the one Clock mana one one, one, and clockworks, and you also um, and you have galvanizers and lane lines and um, the sacred or simulacrum. Yeah, simulacrum. All right, so this turn I think we're just tracking because our hand is really bad. Oh, well, that's an egg. I like the gold. Yeah, one, though, dude. I feel like I have to get an egg here. Yeah, hit him with the golden egg. Oh, you didn't shoot oh. the golden egg. Oh, um, whatever. I like coining it out, and then he's most likely not going to trade into it. Yeah, most likely. But, and then I built, like, big mage around it. And it was just, I played it against a friend. It was really funny. That seems actually like a pretty cool idea. I think the Death Rattle Rogue is going to be really powerful pretty soon. It beats the... Odd Mage. Yeah. Hey, this was a really weak turn. So yeah, we just go Terror Scale and then do some trading. And then it feels bad to keep using our weapon on the on these 1-1s, one -ones, but we have to worry about level up, so... I think I'm fine with using that on 1-1s, one -ones, actually. I feel like it's actually pretty bad. Next turn, I think we Carnivorous Cube. Yeah, we most likely cube the egg. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Damn, these Hunter's Markers are so bad right now. Oh, yeah. So I feel like I killed a Creeper. Said, yeah, because uh, Fungal Mancer could be really strong. I would actually be, ooh, I was going to say it might be okay to uh, cube the 5-5 five five after we trade. Yeah, I was debating that too. We don't Just have anything to activate those eggs. Yeah. So well, it's in the past. But it's okay. Nice, we played around the Fungal Mancer. And then is he going to take this trade for us? Cool. Oh, that's so good. So, wait, before we do that, we can, we can already trade on board. Do you think it's worth just maybe dropping, like, double Spider Bomb, and then it kind of disrupts his his plans? 
That's actually pretty good. I wasn't thinking about that. Because we can make. And you shouldn't have a lot of board. Whenever. Yeah. So I like going that, and then just doing the double trades. Um, I like taking. I'm not the, gonna. I like taking the three damage on the cube, and then the two on the five five. I'm not gonna magnetize them. No, I I wouldn't have magnetized them. I forgot that you could even do that. Yeah, me too. I remember uh, a couple weeks ago there was like an honest cards of Boomsday. And Spider Run was in there without the mech tag, and I didn't even realize. I oh my god! I'm the person when those come out to like realize every little joke, and I didn't even notice it didn't have a mech tag. Fine cleaver. Oh my oh. god! That's really that that. That's really infuriating. Good. And then I think we just take these little trades in case of level up. I think level ups are number one enemy right here. Yep. I honestly am going to be really sad when Cube rotates up. Um, I was, like, for a long time I thought Cube was just an annoying card that shouldn't exist because it sets up so many degenerate things, but it's so cool. Oh, it's so good. All right, so I like taking the magnet bomb into the three one into one of the trades, and then it'll kill the other one, and then just Katharina. Yeah. We didn't even pull charge, dude. Come on, you can't deal with a four thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> I've totally done that before, where it's like, nope, not gonna win this one. <laughs> Let's do probably like a game or two more, and then I think we're probably good to call it. I yeah. Think we're doing pretty well. I think that this list is a lot better than the um, the list we started with, but I do think that the Scarabag is worth considering. I think Kelzeth is also just the best two drop in the game. Yeah, it's really hard until he rotates to want to play anything that's not him. Yeah, I feel like I mulligan all of this. Maybe I keep flanking strike. I like keeping flanking just because they play Black Cat if it's Odd Mage. Um, but everything yeah. else I'm good with Ditchin. Nice, we found Kellis Death and a play dead. Yeah. I always love it when people coin Kellis Death. I think it's so funny. Oh, we found the Undertaker. And it's not Odd Mage. It might be a big mage. Yep, it looks like it's a big spell mage. Huh, shock, we your lost it. Dog, I was going to say, your little doggy lost that one pretty handily. Ooh, there's like the most important card in our deck, though. Yeah, we definitely have to save coin for that. I think that um, this list is pretty favored. It depends on how, like what his late game that he runs is. What the fuck? Why is this, why is this here? Right, Do you think playing out Terra Scale? Oh, just Hero Power? Yeah, I like saving the Terra Scale for value in this matchup. Okay. Because this is going to go late, because you're going to get inf infinite zombies. You're going to try and get the most out of your Undertaker, so. That's absolutely right. I have no idea why he played this Arcane Artificer out. It could so, be a Counterspell, but I'm I feel okay like we with, risk it. Yeah, I'm okay if Flanking gets Counterspell, because then we can go Coin Deathstalker next turn. Yep, there's Counterspell. Yep, so we just go Coin Death Stalker, kill his board. Yeah. This deck runs Skulking Geist, so Play Dead might not stay in our hands. We might not want to depend on it. Alright, so I like just building a beast and seeing what we get. Well, he's not going to be playing any Murlocs. Um. We could go for like loose specimen and then try to get something one or two mana to play next turn. Ooh, Ooh charge. charge. 
And this turn, I'm okay with just playing out, like, the Glundasus, because they don't play weapons. Yeah. And it might bait a spell out or something. Yep. Accolade ping. That's okay. So I'm good with going like spider on terror scale. And then hoping to snipe Same off. Here. Honestly killing either one is fine. And this also makes our Undertaker now have the magnet bomb when it dies. I hit in with gluttonous, right? Uh yeah. It's pretty like it doesn't really matter, I don't think, but I think it's better too. So here comes the first clear, that's fine. So now our Undertaker has um, kill a random minion. We can go Zombies, Devil Sword Egg, Dust, or uh, Terror Scale this turn. I agree with that. Mukla, Mukla's always good. I like Mukla, especially because, uh, oh, Mukla Charge. Damn. So, do you think it's better to go egg terror scale or to go six mana seven seven this turn? Because I'm kind of okay with just pushing the seven damage. I think this is going to be the best opportunity to play it. Yeah. And not get punished. Thanks for pointing that out to me. Because I I like the idea that the devil story sets up for the undertaker to be even better, but um, getting the seven damage in this force is like maybe a meteor. Which is a really slow turn from him. Yeah. And yeah, our hand is looking pretty aggressive since we keep getting charge beasts. So I think we just hard beast every turn for charge and try to win that way. Yeah, I agree. Charge is so good. I'm surprised it hasn't been like completely replaced with rush. Oh, I type pretty fast sub. And like my keyboard's mechanical, so it's fairly loud. It also probably doesn't help that my mic's pretty close, though. <laughs> Do you think Leroy is gonna rotate next expansion? See, I really wish that it would, but I think that it's like the only good charge minion left, and they've already nerfed it like two or three times since beta. So at this point, like it's the only charging finisher that aggro decks have. So I don't think that they can afford to get rid of it because otherwise aggro might just um. Like certain aggro archetypes might just completely die out, and I don't think they want to do that. This guy just—I think he did left. He give up? I think, yeah, I think he gave up. Yeah, dude, we've been getting a lot of games like that today. Oh, I'm okay with just yeah. Katharina this turn. Yeah, Katharina. I'm actually okay with saving the play deck for the Undertaker once this uh, Katharina dies. Okay. I mean, if he comes back. Yeah. In the end, it might not matter. I give a distinct feeling that he left. I would tend to agree. <laughs> but that's because turns out our deck is just too powerful. Death oh, yeah. Hell that... strong. <laughs> nice. This deck's really good. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. And got to rank four. Look at that. Nice. I'm good with playing one more, and then we can call it a night. Especially because that one yeah, is kind of like fizzled out. I feel like that happens a lot. Yeah. I feel like Hunter will get nerfed. Unless there's an answer that comes out in the next, like, week or two. Yeah. I don't really know. It's, like, it's strong. But I think better stuff will come out. Or at least stuff that can contend with it. I think um, meadows have been settling faster and faster. Alright, so I like getting rid of cube, getting rid of grizzly, and then keeping um, at least terror scale. I'd be okay with dropping play dead too, but it's whatever you think. I think we need to drop play dead. I really like the terror scale, keeping terror scale low. Sounds good to me. We need an additional chance to get a death rattle thing so we can coin it out. Okay. 
so this is an, not a great hand, but we have Undasta, which means if we get to the late game, then that's really strong. Um, so this is probably the aggro Kingsbane list, which we're probably not favored against. Yeah. The aggro Kingsbane That's pretty unfortunate. Is cool. I really dislike Kingsbane, actually. Oh, well, that's good. We found that. Um, I don't feel like I hit. Nah. They play stuff like Cavern Shiny Finder, so that's a 3-1 that yeah. you can deal with that. And, um, they might play South Sea, depending on how aggressive their list is. Wow. Maybe they're not playing the aggro list, maybe they're just playing Kingsbane. Maybe. In that case, it might be better just to hold the ooze. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm thinking Stalker. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Our hand is, like, pretty strong um our turn nine as long as we can swing that to get um king crush is going to be incredibly strong yeah so i think we want to play this as like aggressive as we can Ooh, tracking kelseth i like kelseth yeah and then, yeah, probably just Kelliseth. Jesus. Is that a Phantom Freebooter? No, it's a Raiding Party, okay. Well, now that he Raiding Partied, that's one of his cantrips for Kingsbane gone. So we could yeah. let Nis use this turn to um, get 6 health and potentially can't, you know, tutor it back. Yeah, I think we should do that. I think so too. So I like going ooze hero power. Maybe we'll place it, um, Savannah next turn. Maybe. Yeah, we most likely... Okay, so that's a little unlucky. We most likely go Savannah this turn, and then we just play the Witchwood out so that when we Undasta, it doesn't pull the Witchwood, because we want it to pull Crush. Ooh, and he's going face. That's good for us, because it means we get a free trade with our 3-3. Yeah. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. Oh, he's using a sap on that. Yikes. That's not good. So, we are dead on board. Yeah. And, okay, we can stop it. So we can go Shaw, Terror Scale. Terror Scale rushes into the 5-4, and then we trade with the 2-1. And hopefully it just can't kill me in some inexplicable way. Yep, basically. Well, that's a good way to remove that. Yeah, that's a pretty good card. So, we have to play Witchwood Grizzly this turn, because otherwise we die. And then we just hope he doesn't have a sap. Yep. And he already used one, so it's not super likely as the second. And I don't think that those lists run Vile Spine, so as I said that, he played a Vile Spine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well that was a little unlucky, but that's okay. I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, that deck's really powerful right now. Um, essentially, for aggressive decks right now, there's like different zoo variants and then pirates. I've played against that deck more than once, and every time it's annoying. Yeah, that deck's really powerful. I do think that this is, um, like, the Death Rattle list we're running right now with the bigger threats is definitely better than the Scarabag, at least until rotation goes with Keliseth leaving. Yeah, I'd have to agree. I think 
we could probably consider like we can cut this like savannah high main and try to find something for it um i think the best like thing it. you could do is probably cut savannah high main and kelzeth and do the um eggs for more early game of grass. i'd be okay with that that seems pretty interesting i also am definitely okay with running maybe a second ooze since right now um like paladin runs a lot of weapons hunter runs weapons kingsbane runs kingsbane there's a lot of weapons going around so maybe teching in two of those isn't too bad yeah yeah it's an interesting thought and then also something that uh is a little different if you're trying to go for early game but you still want to keep keliseth so you don't want to do the scare bags, you could cut like savannah and i don't know maybe like uh fuck it maybe like one cube and do double glacial shard because it helps versus both minions and like king's vein that might be worth considering because with Kalisat that's still fairly powerful yeah it only um does it for one turn though yeah I think I'm going to keep the deck like it is right now. I really like playing it, and given our only losses against Kingsbane, which I don't think is the best matchup for that. Yeah, it's definitely not a good matchup for us, I don't think. They can um, outscale you pretty fast. Kingsbane with Captain Greenskin is, like, real good. But yeah, I, I think it that absolutely is. is. Yeah, it, it was a negative though. matchup. I'm looking up the stats right now. It's a um, you win that like 46 percent of the time. That's a lot better than I would have thought. I was honestly going to say like a 35 percent chance. It's still like it's the rogue favored like against them pretty hard. Yeah. Wow, uh, Pogo Rogue's never going to be good. Yeah, I don't really think Pogo Rogue is ever going to be good. <laughs> I have a friend who always wants it to be good, and it's funny watching him, like, constantly try to play it. Uh, I think that that guy that we played against playing Exodia Paladin was playing the Tice list, except he decided to cut, like, something to run Crystal Smith Kangor. Because I happen to have the Tice list just sitting in my uh, collection. How is Heladin? Um... Actual Heladin, I haven't had too much success with. The Shrivala OTK with Holy Wrath has been really powerful, though. Yeah, Timeout's a good card. Yeah, I really want Heladin with, like, High Priest of the Call to be good, because that was one that I was, like, really hyping up before the expansion started, but in the first few days, nothing's really come of it. Yeah. But I did unpack a Golden High Priest of the Call, so... Here's nice. Here's basic... Here's hoping he becomes good. I think, I think Priest has real potential to be good. Yeah. Um, I saw I played against a really interesting spell shaman last night that like ran through his deck so fast. There's a um, OTK deck going around with you Eureka, your Malagos, and then you do double lightning bolt, double totemic smash for thirty two. Oh man! And does it run the spirits too? Yeah. Dude, you, That's know probably... you know what's surprisingly strong? Uh, what? Uh, Odd Beast Druid. You want to see this list really quick before I let you go? Yeah, I want to see this list. Here, let me copy-paste this list to you. This list is bonkers. I'll send you the uh, Taunt Druid list that I was talking about. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, that seems like a really fun deck to try. Oh, um, I think this is the, the list Firebat was running. Yeah, it was. Yeah, no, I saw the video. It looked really fun. I had did, I just didn't get around to trying it. The only thing is I don't have Tyrantus. Really? But, like, is Tyrantus that important in this style of list? It's taunt, I, dude. I don't think so. I think you could put it in another, like... I'm gonna go Oakheart, I think. Yeah, I think Oakheart might be better... What does Oakheart actually pull in this list? It doesn't actually pull that much. It pulls like a natural tiger. 
or like yeah you know, like... and hydronauts yeah hmm. it, what did I it, this with, though? can i help you theory craft with that one for sure because i'm definitely interested let's see are there any big beasts that are worth putting in here I suppose you could put in um, gri a Grizzle Guardian. I was just looking at that. Let me see. Does that mess up our Undertaker? Because you get Hadronox as one Death Rattle, Astral Tiger as one Death Rattle, and then that is one Death Rattle? Yeah. That could be okay. You keep pulling out Astral Tigers. It's also a taunt, so you can pull it off of Hadronox. Ooh, that's really cool. That might be worth considering. Let's see, is there any is there any big taunt in here that we're missing? Let's check taunt. Oh, we could just throw in a Zilliax. Zilliax is really powerful. Oh yeah, Zilliax is probably better than Tarianas. I think I'm gonna just throw Zilliax in there for now. This looks really cool though. Yeah. Awesome. Alright. Yeah. I think that we can call it a night though. That went really well though. And so Yeah, I agree. Anytime you want to do a coaching session and you don't have time, let me know. Or you don't have anyone to do it, let me know. Yeah, for sure. What's it called? Um, I think I'm going to schedule two more. And then hopefully, you know, as we keep making videos and getting people here, there will be more. But um, basically, whenever you're up for one, just let me know. And I'll let you know if that day works for me. Okay. Just remember, if you want to get, like, a Twitch channel or a YouTube channel um, going, it's not about, like, posting necessarily quality content it's about posting content regularly and at like a regular time Dude, that's what i noticed i realized like obviously i put a decent amount of effort into my videos i just don't know how to edit very well so it's like kind of raw but um i posted three videos in the past two days because all the new cards are out so that's really cool and um one of them i think i linked maybe like twice in like a reddit comment and aside from that i have a video i put up this morning that has like 48 views or something and so for one day for having like no subscribers and like no promotion that's really strong yeah i think if you just upload every day at this particular time like brian kibler is a master at it he uploads every day at like 10 o'clock or yeah. 7 a.m his time or something my plan was uh i'm gonna try and especially with all the new cards and like there's a lot of stuff to test i'm gonna try to do one at least one video a day and so um like yesterday I streamed the Evolve and Aggro Shaman testing and so that was a video and then I did the supplementary video to that and then today I was going to do one all about um, Princess Talajani Priest um, but I, ran, I like had other stuff to do but so I'm really glad that you decided to do a session because I can use that for today okay awesome yeah by all means have a good one man uh, awesome yeah you too man alright I'll talk to you later talk to you later bye See you. All right, that went pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how uh, that session went. We did, you know, a pretty decent amount of games. We tested out some stuff. Um, we didn't really learn too much, but you know, you get some basics of Death Rattle Hunter in there. Uh, we learned that Undertaker is probably okay, even though we never actually got to play it. Um, as well as learning that Scarabag is probably really strong. But turns out Kelseth uh, is just too good, so it's not worth cutting your Kelseth just to run Scarabag, I don't think. Um, but the Scarabag into Terra Scale on three, if you're against any sort of aggro deck, is really powerful. The problem is against Control, it doesn't do too much. So if there's a way to fit in a like token synergy, um, that might be something to reconsider. But as of now, I think that the all tier list is the strongest death rattle list that we've come across. Um, really, the only thing I don't like is this Savannah High Main. It it counts as a death rattle for your Undertaker, but it's like very mediocre, and it it could potentially mean you don't get like Devil Sore Egg or Magna Bomb or Katharina. Um, it's there to add consistency to getting multiple of those death rattles, you know, proccing on Undertaker. But I just don't think it's strong enough to warrant. Um, so I think I would probably take out like this. And then you can consider even just something like a Rotten Apple Bomb. It's not a particularly powerful card, 
but um, in matchups where you know life gain matters, there's a couple really aggressive decks going around. You get the one of from this dying. You can always try and cube it to get more for more healing if you need that. And then your Undertaker, when it dies, uh, or when you play dead, it will give you more healing as well. So I want to test Apple Bomb in this sort of list, especially if you're running uh, the Undertaker. But that was a pretty good session with Nabossi. Um Thanks to, you know, whoever decided to stop by for the Twitch stream. And um, this VOD, along with, I'll probably make a little supplementary video to it on Death Row Hunter, will be up on the YouTube within the next like two or three days so hopefully the raw stream is going up tonight and then tomorrow uh during the day the plan is to throw together the supplementary video for death Row hunter as well as um stream some sort of you know experimentation i'm not sure what we're going to test tomorrow i was looking into princess telejani lists so it might be going through those lists um kind of like what we did with the evolve shaman the other night so, yeah, things to look forward to, um, but this is the list that I think if you're looking for Death Rattle Hunter, this is your start, and then, you know, obviously this is my little addition for testing, but you can replace this. Uh, shout out to Altair for the list, and thanks for checking it out, guys. I'm going to call it a night, though, so see you around.